Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. Got himself a job. Boys pulled in 52 suspects today, and 13 more came in from the other divisions. Mm, good. Uh, Steve's girl's up front. Talbot girl's on the left there. Asher's bringing in the Serafini girl, and Barbara Patton's over on the side. Oh, yeah, I see her. Well, tell Murph to sit with the Talbot girl. You take Steve, and I'll take care of Patton. Okay. I'll well, see you later, Ben. All right. Oh, Barbara. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Have you caught him? Uh, we don't know. We're hoping. Feeling all right now? Oh, I feel fine. Real fine. He, he didn't hurt me much, really. Oh, that's good. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, you know those other girls, Barbara? Well, just from their pictures in the paper. When you first came in, I thought you were going to sit with one of them instead of me. <laughs> Did you? Those men with them are only sergeants, aren't they? Mm-hmm. May I have your uh, They're only sergeants. Please? Not a full lieutenant uh, like you. You people oh, out there yeah. the side of the wire of the audience room, may I have your attention, please? <clears throat> Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, boys, keep it moving. Right over here to the end of the stage. Come on, all the way over, boys. That's right. Is that what they look like? I'm I'm afraid so. face front. Golly, I thought they'd be older or bigger or something. When I call your name, step out to the circle. When I ask the questions, talk up so the people in the back of the room can hear you. All right. Number one, William Green, vagrancy. Tell the people where you live, William. No place. Come on, talk up, William. Talk up. It's a long way to the back of the room. Don't live no place. Where'd you sleep last night? In a parked car on Ferro Boulevard. What do you do? What's your work? I get along. You ever think of getting a steady job, William? Yeah, with the world coming to an end any day now, I should spend my free time working on some stupid job. Lots of people in the same world with you. They all work. Dummies. All of them dummies. I'm playing it smart. You were in the county jail ten months this past year? Eight months the year before? Well... Yeah, you're playing it smart, all right. Okay, step back. Number two, Theodore Swan, 290, failing to register. I just got in town. How am I going to register if I just got in town? You were in town long enough to get soused up. What do you want a guy to do? Come right down here first thing and tell everybody he just got out of the clink? That's what the law says you have to do. Why didn't you do it? I was busy. Where do you live? 890 South Hooker Street. Any weapons? No. Well, what about the knife? What knife? The one in the property room. Oh, that. I use it for my fingernails. A knife with an eight-inch spring blade? Oh, yeah. I got long fingernails. <laughs> that knife's just about three inches too long to be legal. What? I suppose my fingernails are too long, too. Well, we'll look into it. Number three, Gilbert Farrell, fifth. Where do you live, Gilbert? Uh, uh, 45, 56 and a half of uh, Franklin Street. Well, what's that? Hotel, a pop house, a room, what? Uh, uh, sort of a, a motel in court. How long you lived there? Uh, six months, uh, uh, maybe seven. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm looking for a job. What kind of a job? Uh, well, uh, uh, something around gym, or maybe uh, uh, training boxes or something. Is that your profession? Yeah, well, I, I know I know some about it. That's why you hang around the 12th Street gym? Yeah, yeah, that's why. Any harm in that? 
There is if you happen to walk off with four sets of boxing gloves. Oh, I, I can do anything like that. I don't have to do anything like that. Oh, you have a source of income even though you aren't working? Well, sure, I get calm. Compensation? You mean unemployment compensation? Yeah, you're the greatest thing I've, I've ever done in this country. Gives a man time to relax, to take a blow and look things over. All right, Gilbert, all right. Slide down to the end of the line. Number four, Howard Perry. Man? Huh? Oh, hello, Ben. You know Barbara Patton, man? Oh, sure. Hello, Sergeant. Well, I'm sorry you couldn't identify one of those men. So am I. Now, Matt, take Barbara down and show her the mug pile. Maybe she can spot him there. Okay. Ash and Quine have the other girls there, too. You still feel all right, Barbara? Not tired? Oh, fine, Lieutenant. Honest. Okay, man. I'll be with Captain Waldo if you want me. Right. Let's go, Barbara. Hope I'll see you later, Lieutenant. You will. Night. Hi, Bill. Uh-uh. Ran through 65 tonight. Nothing. Oh, relax, Brad. Yeah. You uh, think any of these four girls would recognize him if they did see him? Well, it's hard to say. He's quick and it's always late at night. None of them saw his face. Just his back and only for a second. Descriptions don't jibe. He was tall, he was medium, he was heavy, he was slender. Well, I'll have the boys keep hauling them in. We can't pass up any possibility. Majestic theater manager called me again a little while ago. Well, I've still got three men in and around the theater every night. His help looks okay. None of them get off before 12.30, and these jobs have all happened between 10.30 and 12. Each of these girls went to a late movie at the Majestic Theater alone. After the show, they came out, waited for a bus or streetcar, and someone passed them on the street and jabbed them with an ice pick. We're lucky none of them have been seriously injured. Well, our luck can't hold out. He's going to hurt someone bad one of these days. We've got to get him, Ben. Complaints are piling up by the hour. I want you to drop everything else you've been working on. Same goes for Matt, Asher, and Quine, Murphy, anybody else you need. Okay. I want plain clothesmen covering that entire area and as many auxiliary cars as we can spare. Maybe if we put the heat on, he'll hang up his ice pick for the season. You know, Bill, I don't think this bird cares one way or another what we do. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. <laughs> Ben, too early? No, Matt, come on in. I think you both met Dr. Rock one time or another. Doctor, Sergeant Graham. Nice to see you again, Doctor. Same here, Sergeant. Sergeant Quine. Oh, I remember you on that book salesman thing, Sergeant. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Captain Waldo can't get down for this, so grab some chairs, boys, and make yourselves comfortable. Okay. Well, we've picked up over 300 suspects in these ice pick stabbings. No identifications. We haven't had any luck in the mug files. What's more, I don't think we're going to have any luck. So Dr. Rock's here to give us some of his ideas. Uh, I hope I can do you some good, Lieutenant. Okay? Sure, go ahead. <clears throat> Two questions here, gentlemen. What kind of man would accost a young girl on a crowded street, jab her with an ice pick, then flee? And the other, why would he do it? Well, we know it isn't for money. The girls haven't been robbed. And they aren't attack cases. No, no. And there's only one other conclusion about him. He's pathological. An overt sadist. I've gone over the complaint reports and I've interviewed all the girls. Well, these kids have been mighty lucky. None of them have been struck in a vital place. The fleshy part of the arm or leg or thigh. In one case, the calf of the leg. Well, all of the victims have been about the same age, between 19 and 23. Do you think this has a bearing on it? Oh, yes. Yes, very much so. I doubt if he'd attack an older woman. There are indications that he might select his victims beforehand in some manner or another and actually talk with them and know something about them. You mean long enough so they'd appeal to him in this way? No, that's about it. Another point. He always operates under the cover of darkness on a crowded street. Lieutenant Guthrie has suggested we look for a man whose working hours fit into this schedule. I agree with him. Uh, maybe he works someplace where he meets these girls. Well, it couldn't be in their neighborhoods. They live... Uh... In different parts of the city. So it must be where he works or hangs out. Mm, could be. 
Now, uh, I have here some other points that you can think over. I believe your suspect will be agile, possibly indicating he's young. He may be a frustrated artist or sculptor or medical student. His tastes will probably be aesthetic. He'll be the first to tell you he doesn't belong where he is, that he's meant for something much better. Any questions? But do you think he'd admit these things, Doctor, if we get him? Well, that depends entirely on his particular personality makeup. He might. On the other hand, he might claim an hysterical fugue and remember nothing about his actions at the time of commission. Any more questions? Okay, Doctor, that's about it. Well, when you get him, we've got a place all reserved for him at the county hospital. Of 415 at 9th and Austin. 89 of 518 at the corner of Madison and Colfax. Hey, that's some sign, huh? UAR yeah. 1045. How did they get the smoke to come out in rings? 27 of 211. Some kind of blower, I guess. At all night market, 14th and Sheridan. Molly still with the cold? Oh, you said it. Half the night last night. Couldn't breathe. I think I'm coming down, too. Oh, yeah, it's always the way. I was going to ask Rourke about that. Maybe it's psychosomatic. Think so? Mm, everything Frank. else is. Why not? Frank. Probably right. Dark blue or black. Late model Chevrolet. Take it around here, man. Three, five, Frank. This park looks pretty Dark in the daytime, but it gives a guy a lot of running space at night. Occupant unknown. All units, area H, ADW, 16th and Curtis. Ambulance is on the yeah, way. Yeah, this one street over. All yeah. units, area H, ADW, 16th and Curtis. Is that them ahead? Yeah, by the bus stop. Asher's on. Yeah. Hello, Ben. We've got another one. The name is Virginia Plunkett. You call in? Yeah, the whole area's covered. All right, let's take a look. All right. Yep. All right, all you people, let's get back. I wasn't doing anything, honest. I was... Uh, yeah. Now, we know, we know it's going to be all right. Why would he do that to me? Why? Why? Any of you people with us see anything? Uh, does it hurt pretty bad, Virginia? No, not so bad. I mean, I didn't even know it happened for a minute or two, and then it hurt. I, Did you see him? Did you get a good look at him? I didn't see anybody. Why? Why? Why did he do it to me? Hi, Doc. Hello, Ben. Hello, little lady. Now, uh, let's have a look. What's the matter? Is that? Uh, lie still, please. Ed, hand me that. What are you going to do? We don't want anything serious to happen to you. Here. Oh, well, it wasn't so bad, was it? No. No, I did. Where are you taking me? What about my mother? Are you going to tell my mother? I wasn't supposed to go to the show tonight. No, no, no. It'll be all right, little lady. It'll be all right. We'll take care of you. Ed, keep that end down. Uh, when can we come and talk to her, Don? Maybe tomorrow afternoon, or next day. Is that the soonest? Yeah. She's the first one who's folded up. Oh. Afraid it touched her spinal cord, Ben. This kid may never walk again. Got any plans this Saturday night? Don't make any that don't include yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and Gangbusters on CBS Radio. You'll want the full details when Edmund O'Brien, as insurance sleuth Johnny Dollar, looks into the case of a policyholder who liked to feed birds. And you'll want to hear Gangbusters chase some speeding bank robbers plaguing Maryland State Police. Enjoy both these mystery shows this Saturday on most of these same CBS radio stations. <laughs> Still in surgery. 
Her mother came over, told us Virginia won the Charleston contest last week. Ain't that something? Yeah. Uh, do they have any money? Just what Virginia makes working in the dime store. There's an army doctor working with Gerson. Maybe the two of them can straighten it out. Pick up anybody? Uh, yeah. Witness. Some coffee before you meet him? No. Uh, how about you, man? No, no. No, he's in your office, Ben. The uh, Crockett's with him. His uh, name's Edmund Patchek. Sells papers at 16th in California. Uh, hi. Hello, Mr. Patchek. My name's Guthrie. This is Sergeant Greb. Uh, glad to know you. Uh, Mr. Patchek, would you mind telling Lieutenant Guthrie and Sergeant Greb what you told me? Sure. Why not? I understand you saw the whole thing. Things right. What this man's been going around doing? Against the will of God. Certainly is. Against the laws of nature. Uh, what did you see, Mr. Patchek? Well, I was selling my papers and praying tonight when it happened. The girl was uh, very pretty when I saw her come over toward the bus stop. I prayed for that girl's body and for her soul. And I prayed we now We know that... you did all that, Mr. Patrick. Uh, could you tell us exactly what you saw? And he crossed from in back of me. As the girl came toward me, he went toward her. Tall, big, husky fellow he was. The image of a god with a devil all around him. He passed her. Quick, he was close. He passed her, and I saw his hand go out, and there was a pick in it. It came down quick. Oh, quick he was. The girl I was praying for kept walking for maybe another ten feet. And then she screamed and fell. And I prayed for her. I prayed for her. Hey, can you describe the man's face, Mr. Pasha? I saw it. He didn't run away when it happened. He, he, he turned and waited for her to fall. And I saw his face. Well, what kind of a face is it? Dark, light, mustache, what? The devil's face. What do you mean? He walks the earth with... Are you do any better, Quine? The devil. Nope. Well, I'd lay off till you came around. You that's about the way he gave it to me. Mm. Man well, at least he's sure he saw that something. Yeah. I'll get Ash and we'll keep working on it. I'll him. Okay. His face! What? Uh, uh, do you want it? Yes. Uh, Where is it, Mr. Patchy? I've seen him across from the theater in a white jacket. White. White. The color of evil. White? Where I go from a soup. A bus boy in a white jacket. Which one, Mr. Patchy? Yeah, uh, Gaylord's cafeteria. Be closed this time of night. Uh, any of you fellas got a smoke for me? I'm Jim Gaylord. Looking for me? Yes, I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Graham. How do you do? We can talk better in my office, Lieutenant. Okay. Uh, Matt, uh, better stay down here. Keep an eye on Patcher. Right, Ben. Uh, this way, Lieutenant. When you called me this morning, I could hardly believe it, Lieutenant. Well, we aren't certain of anything yet, Mr. Gaylord, but this is the best lead we've had so far in these cases. Oh, I understand. Terrible things. What kind of a man would do it? What kind of a man? Well, let's assume he's a pretty sick man, Mr. Gaylord. That his actions are prompted by a stimulus that you and I have never known. It's hard to look at it that way. But you, a police officer, I suppose you uh, have to? Yeah, I suppose I have to. After you? Thanks. I have all the information you asked for right here. And here we are. All in all, we have 30 bus boys. Some work full time and some only four hour shifts. Uh, could you break that down? Well, we open at 6 in the morning. Crew of 12 come on at that time, and they all stay until 3 in the afternoon. Now, here. Mm, all right. The next crew comes on at 11, and they go off 4. Uh, how many on that ship? 12. That means during the heavy lunch hour, we have 24 men on the floor clearing up. And uh, when does the next shift come on? 4 o'clock. Six men working from 4 to 10. That's when we close. Our evening business is small. People prefer the cocktail lounge. Uh, can I see that list, too, please? Of course. Uh, do you know any of these men, Mr. Gaylord? I know who they are, and I recognize their faces. Uh, do you know anything about them? Straight, I can't help you there, Lieutenant. I really don't. Some are kids in school. Some of them hold other part-time jobs. A bus boy is a bus boy around here, and we have a pretty fast turnover. Mm. Will anyone quit in the last week or two? No, I haven't lost a boy for two months now. Keeping my fingers crossed. Mm. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to have these names and addresses for a couple of hours. Now, you can keep it, Lieutenant. I have duplicates. Well, thanks. Anything else I can do? Uh, not right now, thanks. Well, maybe there is. Oh? Our witness is sitting downstairs having a bowl of soup right now. He'll probably be here most of the day. He may try to eat everything in sight. <laughs> I've noticed that old man before. 
I'm glad to see him getting a good meal for a change. <laughs> well, uh, give me the bill. I'll pick you... up the tab, Lieutenant. I'm as anxious for you to get your man as anybody. Okay. My men will be in the waiting room downstairs and at all doors. If you run across anything you think might help, I'd appreciate it if you go directly to them. I will, of course. I have a daughter myself, just 19. And I read about that poor child last night. Terrible thing to tell. Something like that happened to Mary Jane. I, I don't know what I'd do. Well, then you have a pretty good idea how bad we want to get this man. Oh, uh, one thing more. Do you use ice picks here? All the time, for chipping ice. Where do you keep them, Mr. Galen? Why, every busboy carries his own. Sam? Hi. Uh, the second ship come on yet? Yeah. Patchak's not doing so well. Nothing, huh? Nothing. All those lists you got from Gaylord. No records on any of them. I should talk to all the girls again. They all had something to eat here before they went to the movie. Well, that helps. I was beginning to worry about Patchak. Uh, you think maybe he told us a story to get something to eat? Or a warm place to pray. What about bringing the girls down here to look things over? No, let's wait. <sighs> None of them really saw much but his back... Patrick saw his face. No, he's still our best friend. Oh, hi. Hi, man. I'm your relief. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> How do people stand it in a cafeteria for eight hours every day? Beat? The noise. Come on, let's get out of here, Ben, and find a quiet place and have some lunch. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Patrick spotted somebody. What? Oh, no. Well, sure he has. Look at him. He's standing up. I've been watching him for three hours, Ben. He does that every time they put something new on the menu. You're sure, Mr. Gaylord? Oh, I'm positive. This is the last crew, and every one of them's here today. And they're all out on the floor, Ben. What do you think? Well, he's had time to look at all of them. I've been hoping that he was wrong about it being one of my employees. He's always struck me as a very confused old man. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hi, Ben. Hi. Anything from downtown? Yeah, rundowns and some of the men working this shift. Uh, Ryan's from McAllister, Oklahoma. He'd been here a couple months. Told his landlady he plans on going to university next semester. Medical school? Didn't say. Steele's 24, married, couple of kids, lives in Arvada, has a filling station job when he isn't here. He's trying to buy a house. Uh, serving nothing. Lives in the boarding house, works with weights. Cargo's over at the gym talking to people. Mm. Well, what about the others? Yeah, I'm waiting for a phone call now. Okay. Look, uh, tell him to keep on that anatomy angle. I think it's the best. Right. Come on, man. Anything more, Lieutenant? No, we'll call you if anything comes up, Mr. Gaylon. All right, you have my number. Hi. Yes. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Mind if we sit down? No, no. Well, it's 3.30, Mr. Patchak. You've been here all day long. Uh, true. true. Got to get to my papers and my friend soon. <coughs> Way behind with all this promotion today. Well, we're all way behind, Mr. Pache. Yeah, we didn't ask you to come here just to oh, eat. wait a minute. I remember why I'm here. Well, Mr. Pache, you've seen all of the men who work here. Yes. Strong men, most of them. Some weak and doomed. You looked them over carefully? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We've been hoping you'd recognize one of them. Huh? You remember what you told us last night about the man you knew in the white jacket? Uh -huh. Well, Mr. Patchett? I'll pray for him. Well, have you seen the man we're looking for today? Yeah, I must have. He works here. <clears throat> you don't remember him now, is that it? It's a hard thing you ask of me. To find one face in all these faces. Are you sure that's it? Would you know the face? I know the face, Lieutenant. Well? Ever since the face appeared, I've been wondering how to say this thing to you, Lieutenant Guthrie. You mean the man's here now, in this place? Oh, well, what'll happen to him? Will he be punished? He'll be examined. I can't say what'll happen after that. Tell us who he is, Mr. Patcher. Should I? You told us yourself he's acted against God's will and the law of nature. I think you should. 
Should I? If you believe what you say about the violation of these laws, Mr. Patchy. One man on the balcony. That is the face I saw with the pointed steel. Which one is he? By the water glasses. That's Ryan. Ray Ryan. Worked here a couple of months. Okay, I did right. Man. I did right. I, I, I didn't kill myself doing this. Patrick, come through. Yeah, take care of him. My man's up there. Okay. He's some witness. Yeah. Ryan? Huh? I'd like to talk to you, son. Huh? What about? We're police officers. Police officers? Yeah. You have a coat? We want you to come downtown with us. Well, why should I? I haven't done anything. You've been identified as the man who's been using an ice pick on several women in town. Oh, I, I read about that. Well, why, why would I do a thing like that? Don't you know? No, no, I don't. I don't know. Well, we'll talk it over downtown. Wait a minute. Nah, wait, nah, wait, wait, wait a minute. I, didn't, I don't have to go down there. Give me the pick, Ray. Don't come near me. Ben? Sure. A revolver's a much better weapon than an ice pick, Ray. I'll use it if I have to. Right here. Well? It is a better weapon. Your right wrist. Okay, come on. Don't you have to have some proof to take me into custody? We just said we had a witness. One of those girls saw my face? No. Just someone who prays for you. The lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you. The lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call out the Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb, was written by E. Jack Newman with music composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Barbara Whiting, Junius Matthews, Virginia Gregg, Harry Lang, Herb Butterfield, and Sidney Miller. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. the best fun making from Arthur Godfrey's daytime shows on CBS radio. That's what you hear every Sunday afternoon on most of these same CBS radio stations when King Arthur Godfrey and his round table holds court. Dan Coverly speaking and remember You enjoy Grand Central Station every Saturday in the daytime hours on the CBS Radio Network.